Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to solve Diophantine equations using continued fractions. In the previous video, you have already seen how a given rational number can be reduced to a simple finite continued fraction using Euclidean algorithm. Let's now look at a few things which we will be needing for solving the Diophantine equations. First, the kth convergence. Now, what are these? The continued fractions made by truncating the expression. By expression, we mean the continued fraction after the kth partial denominator. These are known as the kth convergence and they are denoted by CK. So, CKs are nothing but A0, comma A1, A2 going up to AK. Remember, the first convergent C0 will always be A0. Now, what does this mean? It means if I take a simple continued fraction A0 plus 1 upon A1 plus 1 upon A2 and it goes on 1 upon AK dash 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 1 upon AN. Now, this is a simple continued fraction. If I truncate here, that is, I am taking only A0 as a part of my continued fraction, then C0, the convergent, will be equal to A0. We have already written here, C0 is equal to A0. Now, let us say we truncate here, that is, we have taken only this part of the continued fraction A0 plus 1 upon A1. As we are going up to A1, it will be called C1. So, C1 will be nothing but A0 comma A1. Now, let us say we go up to A2, that is we are truncating here. Then my C2 will be A0 comma A1 comma A2. If I truncate at AK, then a0, comma A1, comma A2, comma AK will be my CK. So this is what we mean by the convergence. A few facts. Alternately, the CKs are less than or greater than the quotient except C0. Second, the even numbered convergence are always less than the odd number convergence. Or in a nutshell, you see C0 will be less than C2 will be less than C4 dash 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 C5 is less than C3 is less than C1. When we solve problems, you will see this would be clear. Now, let's look at a theorem. The kth convergent CK are given by CK is equal to PK upon QK where k value is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to n. How do we find pk and qk? pk is nothing but ak, p of k minus 1 plus pk minus 2 and qk will be ak, q, k minus 1 plus q, k minus 2. But this is only for k values 2, 3, 4 and all. So what about k is equal to 0 and 1? So when we take k to be 0, P0 or P0 will be A0. When we take K to be 1, P1 will be A1, A0 plus 1. And Q0 will be 1, Q1 will be A1. Now, these are the formulas which we use for finding our convergence. Coming to solving Diophantine equations using continued fractions. I'll explain this using the example. Solve the equation 23x minus 53y is equal to 2. Using continued fractions, find the general solution. Now, here you see we are given the equation 23x minus 53y is equal to 2. First thing we'll do is we will start with our continued fraction. So, what will we do? Pick up the bigger number 53, divide it by the smaller number and form the continued fraction. We will write the continued 
fraction using Euclidean algorithm. Now, 53 will be nothing but 23 into 2 plus 7. Now divide 23 by 7. You will get 7 into 3. The quotient is 3. Remainder will be 2. Now divide 7 by 2. Your quotient will be 3 and the remainder will be 1. Next, 2 when divided by 1 will give us the quotient 2 and the remainder will be 0, which means we will stop. Now, using our quotients, we will write our continued fraction. So, what is my continued fraction of 53? by 23 that would be now see as the bigger number 53 is on the top we start by taking 2 here at the integer place so 2 plus then write 1 upon take this 3 now because 2 we have already written 3 3 plus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon take this 2 so a continued fraction is ready now, few things you have to see. First, that here, all these terms which we have, these are our A's. So, this is A0, this is A1, this is A2, and this is A3. A0, A1, A2, A3. So, we have A0, S2, A1, is 3, A2 is 3, uh, A3 is 2. Well, how far have we gone? We've gone up to A3. So, my K value is 3. This is something which we will be using. So, you have to remember. Now, let's write a convergence. You've seen K value is 3. So we'll start with C0. C0 is nothing but A0 and you know that A0 value is 2. Then come to P0. You know that P0 or P0 is nothing but A0. So that is also 2. How about P1? For P1, we use the formula A1, A0 plus 1 and A1 value we have just seen is 3. So we have 3, A0 is 2 plus 1, P1 comes out to be 7. How about Q0? Q0 you know by default will be 1 and Q1 will be nothing but A1 and A1 we have just seen is 3. So if you see at this stage we have, let me write them here, C0, which will be nothing but P0 upon Q0, is nothing but 2. C1, which is P1 upon Q1, is what was P1? 7. And Q1 is 3. So we get C1 as 7 by 3. Now, for the other convergence, we will use the formula. You know that. P2 will be nothing but A2, P1 plus P0 and this will be equal to A2. You know that A2 value is, let's go back and check, A2 is 3. So we have 3. P1 you just found to be 7. P0 you just found to be 2. So this value P2 comes out to be 23. Now let's see what is a Q2. Q2 will be nothing but A2 Q1 plus Q0. What is A2? We just saw A2 was 3. Q1 was also 3 and Q0 was 1. So this value 
comes out to be 10. So what is C2 then? Just let me separate this here. C2 will be nothing but P2 upon Q2 and that will be 23 by 10. Now, our C3 will be nothing but the original ratio or the quotient. But still, let's check using the formula. So for that, I need P3. P3 will be A3, P2 plus P1. And this will be nothing but what was our A3? A3 is 2. So we have 2 into P2, you've just found is 23 into 23 and P1 you saw was 7 so plus 7 how much does it give us 53 now come to Q3 Q3 will be A3 Q2 plus Q1 and A3 we've already seen is 2 Q2 you've just found is 10 multiplied by 10 Q1 we have seen is 3. So we add 3 here. This gives me 23. So what does our C3 come out? C3 which is P3 upon Q3 is your 53 by 23. And this is nothing but the original quotient we had started with. Now once you get this, remember guys the formula which we have already seen in the theorem has been used here. I'm writing them once again. Your P K is found using A K P of K minus 1 plus P of K minus 2. And Q K, all you have to do is in place of P write Q. So A K Q of K minus 1 plus Q of K minus 2. So we have got these. Now the second theorem which we had used, if you go back to that, it said, the theorem said, your PK using the theorem PK Q of K minus 1 minus Q K P of k minus 1 is minus 1 to the power k minus 1. Now, as we need to substitute the k value, that is why we had mentioned k comes out to be 3. So, what will we do? Now, this is nothing but your k is 3. So, we have P3 Q2 minus Q3 P2. And that is nothing but minus 1 to the power 3 minus 1. What is P3 for us? You know that P3 is 53. And what is Q2? Q2 you found was 10. So this is multiplied by 10 minus. What was a Q3? 23 multiplied by P2. P2 value you saw was nothing but 23. So we have this is equal to minus 1 to the power 2. What do we get? We get 53 into 10 minus 23 into 23 is equal to 1. Now just compare it to your original equation. Your original equation was 23x minus 53y is equal to 2. Which means that my 23 has a plus sign. So what we'll do, we'll just rearrange this equation and write it as 23 minus 23. Take the minus sign inside. And here as 53 was negative. 
So we'll multiply by a minus sign and give 10 a minus sign. So this will be nothing but 1. If you open it up, it is nothing but 53 into 10 minus 23 into 23 is equal to 1. But our right hand side of the original equation has 2. So we will multiply all over by 2. We'll get 23 minus 23 into 2 minus 53 into minus 10 into 2 is equal to 2. Which further gives us 23 into minus 46 minus 53 into minus 20 is equal to 2. If ever you have a doubt, just simplify the left hand side of the equation. You should get 2. Now, to write the general solution, you know this is nothing but our initial solution. X naught, this is nothing but our initial solution. Y naught, if you compare it to your original equation. So what's the general solution? General solution will be x is equal to now x naught plus b by d t. So y will be y naught since you have a minus sign in the original equation we have a plus sign here a by d t where t values can be from 0 plus minus 1 dash dash dash. Now, let's put the value. So, x will be, what is x naught? Minus 46. B value from the equation is nothing but 53. D is the GCD, which is 1 or GCD of, let me write here. D is GCD of 53 and 23 which is 1 and you have found that in the Euclidean algorithm also the GCD is 1. So D which was GCD is 1. A actually we are using the equation AX plus BY is equal to C. So B value is 53, D is 1 and we write the D. Now y will be what is y naught minus 20 and again we have a plus sign a value is 23 t so this is the general solution where t value is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 it goes on so you have found the general solution now let me show you one thing how can we find the convergence directly from our continued fraction. We had 53 by 23 as 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 2. Now, let's write all the C's, the convergence CK directly. If I take the fraction only till here, my C naught is 2. If I take the fraction till here, we are truncating, then C1 is 2 plus 1 by 3. And this you know, if I simplify, will be 7 by 3. If I take the fraction till here, then C2 will be 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. Now let's simplify. This will be 2 plus 1 upon. What do we have here? 3 into 3 is 9 plus 1, 10 by 3, which is nothing but 2 plus 3 by 10. Simplify that further, you get 23 by 10. And if you take the full fraction, obviously it will be the original fraction 53 by 23. So you see we have all our convergence directly 
also from the continued fraction. These are the values which you got here. See, you got C0 as 2, C1 as 7 by 3 and C2 as 23 by 10. C3 of course, as I said, that's the original fraction which will add up to 53 by 23. So if you are careful, you can directly find the convergence without using the formula. Thanks a lot for watching. The next video will be on prime numbers. You can check my website prof.prithibajpay.com for notes, my class lectures with lot of solved examples on number theory.